What's good, Denver? It's Shelly Martinez, your host of Chopping It Up with Shelly at Hollywood Barbershop. This is the Barbershop. Chanello uh, is an uh, African name. It's Igbo, Nigeria. It means style of God or God remembers. Okay. That's the rap name, God remember, is what people also call me. And then got some nicknames in between there. Nello. Hopefully good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope so, too. Nello. So tell me about Chanello, about yourself. Like, what, where did you, like, so you, you're a rapper. Mm-hmm. You're also, you do ministry. Mm-hmm. And then you also do a lot of some nonprofit stuff for the city of Denver. Is that right? Yeah. So let's start with, um, let's see, you went to college. Let's start there. Mm-hmm. Where did you go to college? I went to uh, college at Morehouse in Atlanta. Morehouse nice. College. Yeah. I was down there for a few years and um, studied religion. Okay. I initially started out with political science, but I was like, uh, yeah, I was failing classes. I wasn't really doing well in that department. Boring. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want to be. I rely. I didn't. Wanna, I didn't. Well, one, a lot of the stuff that like I was learning, I felt like was like knowledge that I can go get mm-hmm. on my own. So I wasn't really excited by it. And then uh, I thought I wanted to be like a politic. I knew I was going to do stuff in community, and I thought like politics was the way. But that wasn't. That wasn't. That didn't really fit who I was becoming. Somebody told me try religion out. And yeah, it made sense. So it seems like more fulfilling. Yeah, it's you know. more about the humanities. So I mean, I like I learned about like world religions, like everything from Christianity to to Islam to Buddhism. But then also, at the same time, we were learning about like um, learning about Marcus Garvey and different type of activists and people who did stuff on behalf of humanity. And then um, did some critical thinking and philosophy, and I feel like that shit kind of just shaped. Yeah. You know. Well, you're a pretty, pretty fascinating person. So, <laughs> Ch- uh, Chanel has been a, a client of mine for how many years now? Like at least two, I would say. Wouldn't you think? I think it's two. Yeah. About two, and mm-hmm. um, uh, it's always, uh, always a pleasure to have him in my chair. We talk about so many things, uh, just a- what's going on in the world, religion. We talk about yeah, life rapping. experiences, <laughs> rapping, <laughs> relationship stuff. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty enlightening. So, um, yeah. you what, where were you uh, before you came to Denver? I was in Atlanta, so I was in Atlanta. I uh, grew up in St. Louis, uh, and then when I turned 18, moved to Atlanta. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then uh, you've been in Denver for how long? 
for two years now. Well, no, actually, damn, I'm still on like another clock. I think it's coming up on three. Is I'm it? coming up on my third year. So do you think you this is gonna be your your home or? Yeah. It's, it's, it, it still could, remains to be seen. It could definitely be like a home base. I uh, wanted to come to Denver because why well, I visited and then my folks were here. And they always like be like, yo, y'all should, they tell me and my siblings, like, y'all should come try it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I did, like, because I was in Atlanta, I felt like I kind of accomplished. I'd been there for school for a minute and stuff. So it was mm -hmm. like, I wanted to be in a different space. Denver's like a medium paced city. It's got like a real ambiguous culture, which I love in terms of like uh, the music and everything because people are like down to like hear whatever mm -hmm. or people are down for whatever event as long as it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I got and, and then you've been doing a lot of pop-ups and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the pop-up per performances. Yeah, I, um, do, I do some pop-ups and then, yeah. And, um, so tell me, and there was one thing that you told me about a, a while back that you were participating in, and it was called the Kaleidoscope Project. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Kaleidoscope Project is a uh, nonprofit I run with uh, my friend and family, Carrie Joy. What up, Carrie? And uh, yeah, it's basically it. the mission of the nonprofit is to activate collective power in black and brown communities through grassroots organizing, cultural fortitude, and civic engagement. So we teach grassroots organizing and then we leverage the arts as a medium to promote whatever community message that we're trying to send. That's good. Or whatever we're trying to do on behalf of the community. That's a nice collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so tell me about your ministry. So you, you, your, fa your father has a, has a church that he, he ministers at, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. Yeah, he ministers at a shorter community in the church. It's off of Martin Luther King. Now I will have so. to tell our, our viewers that um, I, I uh, witnessed one of your um, probably <laughs> about a year a sermon yeah, yeah about a, a year ago and uh, it was just on video that you had posted you know but mm -hmm. man it was uh, it was very moving and he's very talented let me tell you <laughs> so all that that religious you know education and, and ability to speak and then rapping and all that stuff too is just really um, uh, you know how to get the message across mm -hmm. you know yeah. Like it all works together, I guess, or mm -hmm. whatever. I used to have a friend because I used to, I used to work between the alias for God. God remember was the alias, so I didn't really people didn't know my name or the meaning of my name. That was what was behind it, mm -hmm. and uh, I would just like kind of drop my music and never put my face to it or whatever. And you know, my one of my friends always tell me like, "Yo, you preach and stuff like that." And, consider like when you get up at the pulpit like you have a message to the congregation well in the same breath it kind of happens when you like do it through music mm -hmm. except people are just showing up through headphones yeah so it's always like a message behind like what I'm doing even like with this last project that I put out season of depression mm -hmm. where I was like the intent for me was to talk about <laughs> season of depression and then kind of get out like keys or things that I've learned from stuff that I've been personally doing to get through the season, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people do have a depression. They don't speak about it, you know. Uh, some people don't want to um, identify that they actually are depressed. <laughs> but we do go through seasons, yes. you know. Even it's if embarrassing. It's, it's, yeah, I mean. It can be embarrassing sometimes. It can be, you know. It's but, not embarrassing, but it can be. Yeah, yeah um, but I mean, uh, you know, sometimes it is just a season, you know. You're going through a season of, of a low point in your life, or it could be actual seasons, like spring, summer, and fall type shit, you know. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, so how do you uh, how did you identify that you were going through all that? Uh, because my life was in shambles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you had a low point at, at, at times. Yeah, I, def I mean, I feel like, but um, a lot of people have like uh, childhood stuff that they don't deal with. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm reaching that age, or like I'm in that age range, where like I kind of. When you're a teenager, you're a teenager, you don't understand things as mm -hmm. much. You go to college, you're distracted by school, and then like you get to your 20s, and then you have time to think and sit and reflect, and things become apparent. You know, you're you're so mature for your age. How old are you? 26. 26. So, I mean, everybody's on their own timeline, right? Mm -hmm. Their own path or whatever. And, um, you know, self-awareness and stuff like that, you know, the childhood trauma, things like that, that affect us in our adult relationships and stuff. Um, I guess I think it comes to everybody 
at different ages, you know, the, the, the identifying that and then being mm -hmm. aware of it and then trying to fix it, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it's hard to fix yourself, you know? Like, even going to the gym is a hard thing. Yeah, you definitely. know, you have to go through the pain of, you know, reconditioning the muscle to make it stronger. And then it's the same thing with your with your mind. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people want to point the finger and play, place blame where really they should just turn inward and find out what it is about themselves that... Mm -hmm is contributing to the situation at hand, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, I mean, I, I commend you for being uh, such a young man and knowing that having that knowledge already is, you know, in your maturity that you are, you, that yeah. you have acquired. I mean, that's why I think everybody should just figure out whatever works for them in terms of, like, taking care and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, like, I tried out a lot of stuff, but basically, you know, I was able to take those thoughts and like, just put it into mm -hmm. a, a project in a way and then still, like, you know, even though it's called seasonal depression, it's not a depressing project. It right, is, right. Uh, it's an expressive project. Yeah, yeah it's very and, expressive. And what's nice about that is that, like, I, even even myself at, at times in my life have, have, you know, dealt with depression. Mm -hmm. And I've seeked help for it at times, you know. But I'm a very positive, outgoing. I'm, I'm always looking to the lighter side of things, you know, and stuff like that. But sometimes, you know, life is, gets a little hard and you need a little help to, to get through it. So do you feel like your music really is therapeutic for you in that way mm -hmm. and also your ministry your sermons and things that you do yeah definitely i mean i feel like anytime i have an opportunity to like do any of those things i'm mm -hmm. thankful and i'm in a place in my life where it's like uh all those things are like in a good rotation mm -hmm. for me or like how whatever whatever is the most important in my life whether it's music or like ministry and by most important it just means like I guess the thing that I'm doing most consistently or religiously like I'm okay with that because it's all like all that is me so yeah it's like, <laughs> is there some, is there one thing in particular that is your favorite outlet of creativity oh definitely music yeah yeah I can just because it's all right, it's just something about like being able to like think of something hear it in your head mm -hmm. put it on a mic kind of like this right now put it mm -hmm. on a microphone like wrap it up have your finished product and then play that back mm. and like that's a big there's so many like points where like i don't know i guess you can like celebrate along the way exactly so it's like oh i just finished doing it and then you get to share it and then like oh man i just shared it and then you get feedback you know, feedback or know that like you, it helped at least mm -hmm. like one person or something you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah i mean a lot of the lyrics that you speak about and stuff like that are, are truly truly helpful i think in a, to a lot of people that do listen and, and dive deep into that. Um, so let's see, you have a couple of videos out um, that I, I've, uh, I've seen on YouTube, right? Yeah. And a couple of other different formats on social media. So one one of them uh, that I really liked a lot was Eden. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that one. What, what gave you the, the insight to create that one and what, what was the meaning behind that to you? Well, I feel like um, Eden was like a, a point in like my music career where I was like choosing to share more and be more um, in front of the music and leave behind the alias so I wanted to use it as like a starting point so that's why Eden is a song or a story better yet that's based off the book of Genesis you know what I'm saying okay. and, it, and it tells about it talks about like the the story of creation but um just from a different perspective most people look at that as like the downfall of like mankind but i, I guess eden kind of glorifies that moment is like when we chose to embrace like the grid of life to want to like live in knowledge and truth to not want to buy, hide behind names mm -hmm. and put up these like smoke screens that everything is perfect and everything is all good when we really want more from life right so um i feel like eden was like just my my starting point for that and like me being able to make that statement through that biblical text and music and like who, uh, who bring it all for together. You? Um, my friend um, and my brother, Brooke Waven.
put my heart in my work. Did like a garden that came out the dirt. Come to your city, I'm good on your turf. Shit is right ways, I don't know how to serve. Look at them looking like cops at a perk. On special occasions, she might pop a perk. When she need thick, then she send me alerts. Go to the ATM, money disperse. You ain't gotta lurk on my profile, everything decent. I got the light, I'm a beacon. Niggas cross me, that's treason. Came out the dirt like Eden. Came out the dirt like Adam. You around space like Eden. You don't wanna plan no seeds. Niggas be sleeping and scheming. Look at the mouse that I'm feeding. Oh, what a beautiful reason. Came out the dirt like Eden. Came out the dirt like roses. I just want everyone to know this. Niggas be hating like the police. Whole team beat me quotas. This is what the OGs told us. Whole world just get colder. Came out the ice, I'm freezing. I just wanna beat and eat it. Money on the table ain't meeting. Nobody said it'd be easy. That's why my elbows is greasy. Crossing my heart like graffiti. I go to work with Sumini. Praying my allies will never deceive me. I'll be around if it goes down. If I knew what I know now. Niggas rap when they throw it up. When it's time to eat, what you throwing down? I put my feelings behind me. I put my time in and wait for the time. Plug in that pressure that make you a diamond I've been alone by myself on the island I don't wanna die, it's slow death Get to the back with my last breath I get my gas from the east side Then I go pull up on Cascade Give me some soul, wanna infiltrate Old bitch always wanna instigate Niggas wanna flex for the internet Almost in my prime, I ain't in it yet My niggas up in heaven looking down on me Tell God he's saying blessings down to me Niggas like me, I ain't found any Took the bus deep south to the south city I put my heart in my work Did like a garden that came out the dirt Come to your city, I'm put on your turf Niggas right ways, I don't know how to serve Look at them, look at my cops in the purse What was the next one? What was the next one that you put out? <laughs> at the door Tell me about that one Uh, that one I worked with, uh, Jay Song And, um, he's a local Colorado videographer, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. And, uh, one of the best Denver has to offer. Go ahead. Shout out Jason. <laughs> and um, basically, that video was from the project Seasonal Depression. We chose to drop at the door as a single. Um, just, I guess when we played the project back, we just agreed like that was that was the go-to song that we wanted to drop. It's like a, I guess, straight bars, and then at the end, it's like being able to make the statement that like we're here, we're at the door. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of felt like it was, um, you know, like when the when when the both sides are kind of mm -hmm. fighting to keep the door either open or shut. I kind of felt like it was like, uh, you know, you're you're your worst only enemy at, at times. Yeah. You know, are you you fighting the enemy? You know. Yeah. Um, but uh, I I really liked how how the screen was split. That mm -hmm. was like my favorite part. And also the beginning too, because um, it was like very theatrical the way you, <laughs> you were in the car with the homies and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and I was just thinking about it's like I'm thinking about like that metaphorical door or whatever, like whatever we want to get to, mm -hmm. whatever, whether it's peace of mind on the other side of the door, or wealth on the other side of the door, or longevity, or family and friends on the other side of the door. Like I was basically just saying, like on the other side, the only person that can keep you out is you. <laughs> you know, wanted to make that really apparent through the video. I guess that's just kind of like the place that I feel like I've been in in terms of like everything that I'm doing. You know, and, and like uh, just like seasonal depression and at the door and and the things that we were talking about just a second ago. It's uh, you, you know you always have that choice too. There's always a door. You know mm -hmm. which door do you go through? The one that will raise you to a higher existence or one that will take you to a lower existence. You yeah. Know? And it is all in your mind. Um, so what what other projects can we expect to see uh, from the Seasonal Depression project? Uh, from the Seasonal Depression, I'll probably do a couple more, or maybe one more video for the project. Mm -hmm. Originally, I wanted to do videos for every single song. As you should. <laughs> yeah, which I, I still might do at some point. But mm -hmm. right now, because we just got a whole bunch of music that we want to be able to share with people throughout this year want to do a lot more performances and uh and of course the videos so yeah i'll probably do a video for the same colorado mm -hmm. we'll try and get some radio play for that song too as well i mean i mean both of the songs that you the videos that you put out i mean are very very like to me they're very catchy i really I like them I like very to easy to I, you <laughs> do it well you do it really well <laughs> um so, like, what other what other projects are you besides your your music? Are you involved in at the moment? Okay, at the moment with the the Glasgow project, right now we just started a a course this semester with a prep prep academy. Um, and we'll be.
be working with students in a music therapy class, teaching them how to utilize music or different uh, different assets around music as an outlet mm -hmm. um, in terms of mental health and wellness. And then we'll also be connecting them with uh, and doing some sessions with some professional healthcare providers and then also some professional wellness providers that will like come and show them and practice different things that they can do, other things that they can use as outlet. They'll get credits for the class and uh, we're gonna pay them per class. So we're just excited to be able to work with those students. And uh, we had our first class last week, so it was really dope to kind of meeting everybody for the first time and, and you know starting to get comfortable and excited for like what the, the rest of the semester is gonna bring so we're doing that project right now and then we have a black business circle that we work with we do like the festivals every now and then where we have all black vendors um, and then we have live music and food and eats and we give away uh, fresh produce and stuff so we'll probably gear up and do some more of those in the spring but we'll also have like some more toned down festivals um, along the way too coming up soon that's good yeah now, I see uh, your hair's getting pretty long. Hey. <laughs> and uh, you, you, your hair grows pretty fast. It does. It does. It, it grows pretty fast. This so is, I'm this excited. This is like a year, I think, now. It's just about a year. Because you, yeah, you had it really long to begin with when I first met you, and mm -hmm. then you shaved it down yeah. to like wavelength. And now, I mean, just within. Because it's so dry out here. Battle. Mm -hmm. No, nah, yeah. It doesn't even slow it down because I think it's growing fast now because I'm mm -hmm. like actually using products and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. before, I wasn't really using it. And one more thing. do you Are you going to be performing anywhere locally in the, that you have lined up or on the calendar right now? Uh, nothing on the calendar as of right now, but there will be very soon. And you usually post stuff and let us know, right? Yeah, I, I usually post stuff, so I'll so I get that to you. I'm like kind of just slipped back into after we just did the knock show the knock 303 show at uh get busy living studios which i'll probably i'm gonna share some footage for that too okay you know and um uh, but that was that was like really dope and there's like um, a few other artists that were also on it um that really uh rocked the show and uh yeah it was just a fun night we just turned up so i definitely want to like I love performing. I want to tap back into that very soon. So we're going to line something up probably for next month or, or it's coming real soon. Good. So you guys, uh, Denver, go follow and uh, also subscribe and like um, Chanel's stuff on YouTube and Instagram and all of the other social media outlets that you find him on. And one more time, what was your, what was your? At gr.nello on Instagram. Uh, if you want to shoot by email to grnello jbm at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah, a lot of more dope stuff to come from him. So, all right, keep on the lookout. <laughs> Thanks, Denver. So, tell me one thing. Uh, like, what what does the barbershop mean to you? Barbershop, man. Uh, I feel like it's a, a place of refuge, and then also just a, a spot where a lot of black men like me grew up. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or heard different conversations, or figured out. I would have a perspective on some play chess, talk mm -hmm. shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, and then in my chair, we talk about a lot of other yeah, stuff. Yeah, we talk about a lot of other shit, <laughs> which is cool. So, yeah, and I love having, you know, Hollywood Barbershop here for what it mm -hmm. represents for this neighborhood and uh, this community. So, how many barbers do you think you had, like true barbers, um, in your lifetime? Oh, man. When I was in St. Louis, I had a barber named Mr. Randy, and he basically cut my hair until I, he was like the most consistent barber that I went to mm -hmm. until I was like about 17, 18. And then uh, after that, I had a campus barber. Mm -hmm. um, I used to go to one of the homies, Frog. <laughs> <laughs> so that's two. Um, and then, then you spend a couple of years with you good and hopefully and then, many more yeah when i got when i when i got out here at denver i kind of like bounced around a little bit mm -hmm. and then uh yeah oh, that's cool <laughs> yeah. um where can people find you uh you can find me on instagram at, at the house at the crib <laughs> at gr.nello um 
you go to www.thekaleidoscopeproject.org. Uh, I know that's like a lot of letters to type in, though. But yeah, that um, and yeah, at gr.nello on Instagram and their social media platforms. They hacked my Twitter, so I'm not really on there anymore. Son of a bitch. Yeah, but I got a link tree in the bottom of my Instagram with all the links to seasonal depression. Mm -hmm. A new song I put out, "Talk to Me Different," on SoundCloud. Uh, I'll update that that link with all the future projects and things to come. And yeah. Good. Now, is there uh, any any kind of advice or mentorship that you could give to a, another brother your age or younger, or even someone a little older that um, is uh, either either one dealing with with depression, number two, just wants to be creative and and, and start building his platform for music or even ministry? What would you? What kind of advice would you? Man, uh, be fearless. Uh, love on yourself and, and study you know what I'm saying I guess I say those three things because you gotta be fearless because I feel like discovering yourself is a scary process and being a musician or being a minister or whatever requires that yeah love yourself right uh, just because and I mean that like in a literal sense like figure out whatever your whatever feels like love to you and do that on a consistent basis mm -hmm. Um, cause you can't teach nobody how to do that if you don't do it for yourself. And, 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 and on that note, I mean, you know, like loving yourself isn't just, you know, getting your nails done or getting a massage or, or buying nice clothes. It's setting solid boundaries and, and showing your self respect. And yeah. especially when, when it, when, when it's hard, the hardest thing to do, you know, mm -hmm. because we, we lead by example Oh uh, yeah. and the only way people are truly going to respect or love us is, or is the way we love our and respect ourselves. Right. So we have to always look at who we are before we sit there and, and uh, point the finger at someone at else. Somebody else. You know. What I mean? Yeah. And that that's the last point. Study, because like when you like when you say things or when you share things, it shouldn't just be shit that you're pulling out your ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially if you're gonna put yourself on a platform to share, mm -hmm. be intentional about it. I think too, uh, you know, create a support system, mm -hmm. you know, a circle of, of, of people that you call friends and I mean, you can't call everyone your friend mm -hmm. because, you know, friends should be there to, to motivate you, Thanks. to, to, you know, possibly inspire you, to, to encourage you to be your best, Thanks. you know, and to accept you at your worst, but to also add value to your life Thanks. and I not every it. friend can do that. Yeah. I love being in a place. I feel like right now I'm in a, I'm thankful for my friends. Because the majority of my friends, I could look at them and be like, oh, I look up to you in like some form or fashion, mm -hmm. you know, so. That's good. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, keep I keep uh, bringing all that creativity uh, to us because we really enjoy it. Hey. And uh, we're looking forward to everything that you have to offer and put out this, this, this year, 2022. So you guys, uh, Denver, go follow and uh, also subscribe and like um, Chanel's stuff on YouTube and Instagram and all of the other social media outlets that you find him on. And one more time. What At gr.nello on Instagram. Uh, if you want to reach me by email to grnello, jbm at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah, a lot of more dope stuff to come from him. So, all right, keep on the lookout. <laughs> Thanks, Denver. Hey.